Hi and welcome to this part one in my series on continuum mechanics and how that applies to finite element simulations and polymer mechanics. So in this first episode of my series, I will talk about the deformation gradient and why that's a very important concept and how you can understand the whole concept of deformation gradient. So to do that, let's start with a very simple schematic picture here. We have some object that has some location in space at time zero is right here. And then we put the mark on one location of this object and we call the vector from a coordinate system that's fixed to that location by capital X. Over time, this object may move in space to some other location. It might be stretched out, it might be rotated and just translated. And then we'll say that the same position that initially was at location capital X at a later time, maybe at the location lowercase x. Very abstract, and this is basically as kinematics. The idea is that we can then obviously write a function that says that the current location of an object is given by this function here, x. There is a function of capital X and time. And this is very useful. Uh, we can uh, define from this that capital X is the reference location, sometimes called the material location. And the current location is lowercase x, and that's also called the spatial location of this of part or this point that we're interested in in this uh, analysis. And um, there are two ways to formulate this or, or formulate the theory and equations around this. One is to call the Lagrangian formulation. This is a way to describe everything back to the original initial location. So everything is a function of capital X. And the, the other way to do it is an Eulerian formulation. Everything is referred back to the current location. So the velocity at this location right now is this. So those are two ways to do it. And finite element programs uh, use one of these formulations when they are uh, written down the equations and implemented the code for them. Um, the whole idea here, though, is deformation gradient because just the displacement of a body by itself doesn't really cause stresses or strains. What we care about is the, is the, the relative change of deformation from one point to the neighboring point over time. And that's what's called the deformation gradient. It's a partial derivative of this psi function or the x function here with respect to the initial configuration. So this function is, depends on two things, the initial location and time. And we're taking the partial derivative with respect to the initial location. So that's the deformation gradient. This is a definition, and it looks really abstract in some sense, but it makes, it makes sense, and it's easier to make sense of it, perhaps, if you do it in a component form. So the deformation gradient has two components, i and j, and it's a partial derivative of the location with respect to the original location. And that's really how, how this is done. Um, to make an example of this and uh, sort of give you a little more concretely, let's talk about simple shear. In simple shear, this uh, square here is uh, sheared over to the right, like a deck, a deck of cards may be sheared. And the equations for the movement of any point here, the capital X and capital X1 and X2, will be moved to lowercase x and x2 here. And this is the equation that describes a simple shear and just as a transformation. And then we can use the, the definition of the deformation gradient and apply that as the partial derivatives of this transformation. And we get this equation down here. And this would be an unsymmetric 3 by 3 matrix. So deformation gradients are really 3 by 3 matrices, and they're typically unsymmetric. So that's really the definition of the deformation gradient. What's cool about this is that it's really super important to understand deformation gradients. It's how the formulation of all um, really serious uh, constitutive equations and, and finite element equations are written in terms of the deformation gradients in many ways. And the uh, stresses and strains are also can be derived from the deformation gradient. Often you don't write stress as a function of strain, it's finite deformations. You write stress as a function of the deformation gradient in some form. And I will get into that a little bit later on in a f future episodes of this series on continuum mechanics. Uh, if you have any questions on this initial demonstration and discussion about uh, deformation gradient, let me know below.